Okay. All right. Uh, Peekaboo. A little conversation with Michelle Wright, one of our favorites. Now, my observation from the concert you just did here at Big Valley Jamboree was that you had the audience eating out of the palm of your hand. That's so wonderful. And it, your voice, we all talked about your voice because you've been doing this a long time. And yes. some artists, when they get to be mature, they start losing top end, you know, and it's mm -hmm. just not. But the quality of performance with you and the band was just top notch. Thank you. Yeah, it was so good. You know, I do understand because there's no doubt that, hey, we all understand. You know, as you get a little older things, you know, yeah. you know. So I do count my blessings at, at this point. You know, I, I think of, of people like Tony Bennett or like, you yeah, know, Rita absolutely. Franklin. Or, and so I just pray to God that, uh, or pray to the, the the gods out there that perhaps uh, we'll be able to keep singing because I really do love to do it. Now, when you were a kid in Merlin and stuff, and you had a lot of probably U.S. radio signals coming in and stuff, did mm -hmm. you listen to people like Tony Bennett and singers like that, other formats besides country? Well, I will tell you, the thing that's said that about Small Town that I want to share with the audience, and thank you for playing that song for me, my new single off the, the brand it's new so album, good. Milestone, which we're celebrating the 30th so anniversary of Take It Like a Man with this album, right? Yeah, so, Terry wrote, Clark's I, got you on Country right, Gold, yeah, it's all coming yeah, together. Yeah, lots of good, good support. But what I want to share with you is that I was raised across the border from Detroit. Right. And so I really did listen to quite a lot of Motown music coming yeah. up. And rock and roll, like, you yeah. know, like Bob Seger, because the Detroit rocks was all. But of course, my mother and father were country music singers. And right. so I raised raised around the kitchen table. And their bands, you know, Saturday night around the kitchen table or at band practice. So yeah, or that's the both worlds, right? All that, a little bit of country, a whole lot of country, a little bit of rock and roll, a little bit of Motown. And that's really what why small town sounds the way it does and i guess why i sound the way i sound you, know? you have a natural gift obviously and stuff but those influences and everything you can hear that even in your vocals so when you were a young girl were you in front of the mirror and the hairbrush or you didn't need to be because you were with the band singing with the family all well you know i did start singing a little early yep. on stage and stuff like that yet still no doubt you yep. know you know no doubt that the whole the, the hairbrush thing definitely happened as well yeah and and so as a performer, when you come to something like this, is it just in your DNA now, you know what to do with the band, or, or is there a lot of rehearsal still at this stage? Well, we certainly rehearse and we take it very seriously yep. and we know that we're, you know, we, we need to, when you hit that stage, you know, you can't just be stumbling and fumbling yep. around, that you need to be a well-polished machine up there, you know? And so, because we want the fans to really enjoy what, to, what what we're presenting to them, you know? And so, yeah, we work hard at what we do. Uh, we want to continue to always make sure that the audience knows that we're coming to give a thousand percent. We're not just going to, you know, wander up there and mosey. Around. And I've never seen a show where, where that's not evident because it's just, it's all about the end user in this game, mm -hmm. right? And what does the fan take away? I was talking to your guitar player and said, make no mistake, she's serious about this. <laughs> yeah, she's a great, I worked with you for 30 years. This but, is driving me crazy oh, from the video. I'm, so, I'm being such a girl oh. right now. Like, you're next to this so hair. Look, saying, I lost. Look at how much hair I. I'm a grandpa so nice now, and I. My guitar player, and I was like, no, wait, make it about he's me worked again. With you no, thirty years, and he said, you know, well, like Lee, she's a joy, but yeah. you know, he's it does buddy. get real because she wants a good show. Lee Warren has been with me that many that many yeah. years, and he's my buddy, and he also actually has my back. Yeah, because he knows what I expect. Nice, but you know what, my team, the, everybody. The, I'll tell you what I find that most musicians that are out there doing this professionally are as have as much of an expectation as I do that we're going to do a great show. There's not a whole lot of flunkies at this level out there, you know. Would you consider ever doing a residency type thing? Because sure. I think that would be a great like have somebody book you into Vegas for a month at right. a time around NFR or something because you. It's not just music, it's a, it's the stories and the way, authenticity is the buzzword for this millennium, you know that. Mm. And you are just, you're not that, you know, so polished robotic performance. You are, you connect with the audience. Mm -hmm. You do, and you know. And do you wanna know what else I'd like to, another reason why I'd like to do Vegas? I love to play blackjack. <laughs> oh, I love to play blackjack. Job. How how do you do? Are you, you know, good at actually it? Or up, bad I did a show in Portland, just <laughs> a little town, a little town north of Portland last yeah. weekend, and they actually put us up in a casino. Yeah, I won eight hundred and fifty. Oh, eight hundred. What did you wager? What did you put down? But it was it was the side bet one. Yeah. But oh. you know what? I'll tell you what. I'm like I'm like at five, and then okay, if I win, then a ten, so you're and then sometimes I'll do a twenty-five, yeah. right? And then if I have to double down on that, I might get a little like, oh my god. But I do I do like the rush. <laughs> I do really like. The rush. So what do you do with your uh, newfound wealth when you win? Well, 
this time around, you know, I brought it home to my husband and went, what do you want to do with this? And yeah. he said, just have fun with it. Do whatever it's you want. Mad so, money. Yeah, mad money. Buy a really yeah, good yeah, bottle yeah, of wine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Enjoy it with somebody and, you love. And, 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 and yes, so so I mean, it's actually still sitting on my on my, on my desk in the office. I'm like, what do I do with this? This is so fun. good. Yeah. So CCMAs are coming up in the fall. Are you going to be there? Oh, are you yes, going to come? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I can't make any announcements right now about what we're going to be doing, but we are going to do some fun things. So. Okay. Well, I got a very nice email from George Fox uh, while I was on tour in the Maritimes, Yay. and he's going to be inducted in the CCMA. George George Fox, Hall you guys, is still finally going into the Hall of Fame. Yes. The guy is such a wonderful talent, a wonderful guy, and, you know, he's, he was one of the early ones in the 90s to sort of start paving the road a little bit for Absolutely. some of us, you yeah. know. Yeah, and he had that television show, and Patricia Conroy and I were talking about how we did it, and a lot of artists did it, and he gave us national exposure on his TV show and did a lot of stuff. He and is these, a... now both of us were a little like, oh my God, you mean George Fox is not in the Hall of Fame yet? So I know, know it doesn't really make sense, but... Randall Prescott uh, yes. and, and George Fox and George asked me to induct them, so I'm going wow. down. So we're gonna and we're gonna plan some kind of party after. It's can I gonna, can I come? Please? You're gonna be, okay. you're gonna get an invite. Okay. That's gonna be good. And uh, so, what does it feel like in the Hall of Fame? It's the greatest thing. It, yeah. It's just a cherish, cherish, cher it, you know, and more so the more I'm, I, what I'm loving now is I'm starting because I got inducted at a rather young age. I was, yeah. one, I think, the youngest female ever to be inducted, you know, and so now my friends are getting inducted, like yeah. George and like Patricia Conroy. And right. so, so I, uh, it's, I'm enjoying it more now, even because I get to have my friends come and join It's me. an elite group. And it's you guys beautiful. earned it the hard way. And yeah. I know a lot, you and, and a lot of your peers you from did. that era. Yeah. Six Six nights a week in the bars, oh, yeah. and which is great because I'm, I know it wasn't great in reality, and you probably wanted to give up a few times. But no, the, I loved it. You loved I every loved second it. of it, almost yeah. every second. I loved it. I really did because I knew that it was a way to build my craft because I knew yeah. that that's how I, I just sort of knew that's how it had to be done because yeah. the old timers would talk about that. You mm -hmm. know, they would say, you know, you hear Merle in an interview and he'd be like, well, pick up that guitar and play me a D chord and how many bars have you played and yeah. that kind of thing. So that was the mentality then. And I do know that the young kids, if they could do that, they would too today. Because yeah. yeah. they, they want to play. play. And there's, no, they, they, there's not that venue for them now. Yeah. So I know these, young, do it a different these, way. these young kids would pay their dues too if they could that way. And they are all paying their dues in different ways. That's just how we paid it back then. And now it's the advent of social media, right? So you've got... I, I'd give anything to go back to the day when we didn't have to worry about that extra element. It has pluses it and does. stuff because you can make people's day when you're not on the radio and stuff or not singing, but it's a lot of it mumbo lot of jumbo work. and it changes. It's such a moving target. You don't know if you're reaching the people you should, uh, the amount of, yeah. and especially when you're still, you're a Hall of Famer promoting a new record and new music. Yeah. You've yeah. still got to be in the trenches and get this done. You know, it is a real mixed bag, isn't it? Because I absolutely love it on one hand, and then on the other hand, I feel a real, a real responsibility yeah. to stay connected to everybody and make sure that they, you know, and share myself with them because they're and they're you do great they're at that. keeping yeah. me here, and I want to you know sh be relevant. Sh show them right. Yes. Show them my gratitude, but admittedly, and I think even the folks out there that aren't having to do this like we have to do it every now mm -hmm. and then, I hear them say, well, I don't know, sometimes that social media is wearing me down a little bit, and I don't even have to do it for professionally, right? right? But yeah. So it's a fun thing to have, and you know, I do love, uh, so I have my little private personal Facebook page, mm -hmm. I love it because I can stay connected to my school kids, my school chums and everything, yes. we're really starting to get reconnected again, and That's it's quite me. awesome, isn't Same. it? And we're going, we have a wedding in Saskatchewan this week, and it's this group that we've been texting with, and I've known these guys since grade one. And uh, this, it's a special joy, right? It is, and I will tell you, so uh, a couple of years ago, before COVID, just before COVID, a few of my, like about 10 of my girlfriends from my little town in Merlin, we got together for dinner yeah. the night before I was doing a, nice. a, a concert there in my hometown. And you, you would think no time passed at all. I know. I'm telling you, because you look them in the eye, and we yeah. loved each other, we were friends, we pajama parties and first together, and piercing our ears together, and <laughs> getting perms together, and, and just, so first boyfriends and breakups, yeah. and, and sports. We, did a lot. we were a very athletic uh, uh, group of kids, and my little town of Merlin was a very athletic school. Because yeah. we were all strong farm yeah. kids, so we yeah, were very you were athletic, an athlete, right? yeah, totally very athletic. athletic. So my girls that uh, I won championships with, and everything, and it was so wonderful. Do you do anything? athletic now 
you and Marco together or anything? Well, you know what? We sort of really fell off the wagon yeah, when COVID. We all hit. did. I yeah. can't, but you know what? We 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 are really quite surprised that that happened because we yeah. were like, well, now we got time to. Yeah. And you know, because I travel for a living, he travels for a living. We actually kind of shut down yeah. in a big way. We were like, eh, I don't want to work out today. Eh, I don't want to do anything today. Same so happened. we ate yeah. some pasta and a couple of glasses you have to and do what this you did and of that and to we survive, actually really right? relaxed and yeah. really enjoyed it while our hearts were breaking at the same time if you turned on the news it was a very right. tragic time for our for our world as well yeah. you know but so we are starting to get pretty serious again about it because I need to oh girls my spanks are not <laughs> holding it all in anymore I gotta do something so are you gymming it or are you do you go kayaking do you run what are you doing well so we have a little gym in the house nice. that we set up which is nice not yep. a big big fancy yep. thing just a couple of machines and yep. some weights and everything and so we're, we're that they're yep. both getting into there more often but Marco loves to walk yep. but in Nashville the heat is so out so you can't you cannot unless yep. you get up at 6 a.m. and that's not my favorite time Time of day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. so we are we got the gym set up and that's where we always work out so we're going to start to return to that a little bit and then as the fall comes we do a five mile walk nice. that's really nice that's yeah, really yeah, good that's really nice well you know what continued success it's always great to see you perform and uh our whole cfcw crew was there watching and it's, it's still a master class in performance and it brings joy to a lot of people thank you yeah Good well, thank you. you for all the years of support. Yeah. You guys have been there for me, and I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I get to hang out with you and Jackie Ray, two of the most beautiful people I know. So appreciate thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. We love you. Yeah. All right.